Um, so the uh, but the culture and the technology for this likely came across the Indian Ocean. And Gadam has uh, a slightly higher proportion of South Asian lineages than other states in, um, in, in the Minnesota Malaysia. And <clears throat> that would be consistent with this finding. Now, this is rather a complicated uh, breakdown of the uh, um, where the Malay family lineages come from. Uh, it's based on the previous one, so 58% uh, 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 of lineages goes up to there. And these other lineages that have, uh, have come from elsewhere have almost all come from uh, further north in Indochina and in southern China. Um, and that's the 4% uh, South Asian. I won't go into this in detail because uh, uh, everyone will go to sleep. But, uh, <laughs> the, um, the third population I looked at was from Laos uh, because I wanted to have a population, again, rural, um, uh, unchanged by urbanization. And um, there we found that 47%, uh, that's nearly half of the lineages, were also founding lineages. They'd always been here. Um, and uh, the data here is actually taken from a published paper. Uh, we've recently taken a, a, large, uh, a large sample in collaboration with uh, an archaeological project, the government there. Um, so these pictures come from our project, um, just to show uh, this was a Hmong group, and uh, these are uh, Lao children. Um, as you can see, consenting to uh, the, uh, the sample. Um, but 47% uh, uh, were derived from founding lineages um, locally, and uh, the largest of the remainder um, uh, came from northern mainland Southeast Asia uh, re-expansions. Now I can show um, just some examples uh, on density maps of the, of the different gene lines and their frequencies in different parts of uh, of Southeast Asia, mainland Southeast Asia. So this particular line, R9B1, uh, the gene lines uh, came down from the north into the ancestors of Malays and uh, Borogasi between 25,000 years and 10,000 years ago. Uh, another line, uh, the uh, derived ultimately from R9, um, but uh, one of its branches, F1, uh, again, came from northern mainland Southeast Asia and moved down into the Malay Peninsula into the ancestors of the Malays and Oranasi between 15,000 and 4,000 years ago. As you may gather, there's a recurring theme here that the migrations south are going into the ancestors, not just of the Oranasi, but into the ancestors uh, of the Malay populations of the peninsula. Another, uh, this is uh, a line which uh, was one of Chinese, uh, some Chinese uh, founders, the E5A in particular here, uh, also went down south um, over the past 10,000 years and went into the ancestors of the Malays, Orangasi, and the Nicobars. And uh, another southern Chinese uh, lineage again went down into, uh, into the Malay Peninsula. The ancestors of the Malays are actually around 8,000 years. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, this uh, M7B1 gene line came from East Asia into the ancestors of the Malays between 16,000 and 12,000 years ago. Now, how do people move such huge distances? Well, very often it's by moving along the edges of the sea. Um, water bodies. So either the east coast of the uh, of Indochina or the west coast. Um, and uh, the west coast and dark line here is of course the original colonization coming from Africa. And these red lines are the secondary colonizations coming from southern China. Um, they come down the east coast of Vietnam, but also probably down the Mekong. And, and I've named uh, the, the lineages from the, uh, the previous uh, four slides. Uh, 
so there's, there's probably a methyl route uh, for people to come down as well. I want to ask a question, where is true border? And this goes back to the division I made at the beginning of the lecture um, between southern China and uh, the southern shelf. Where is the true border between northern mainland Southeast Asia and ancient uh, southern China? Um, well, to start, start this question off, this is actually not a uh, scientific uh, map. This, this is actually a trade map. Uh, what it shows is ethnographic uh, uh, items for sale online uh, from uh, the whole of uh, Indochina and the Lake Peninsula uh, and from southern China. And each different color represents different languages, different ethnicities and different products. And the, uh, this map shows no respect for the Chinese border. Uh, it goes right into uh, southern China, right up to the uh, Yangtze River. And if one looks, uh, there's a huge diversity of uh, minorities, ethnic minorities, in southern China. Uh, they, uh, they demonstrate that uh, this isn't a, a political boundary, it's not a uh, cultural, and as we'll see, it's even a genetic boundary. Um, now, a couple of papers, this, this will be a little little hard work because uh, it's using a different approach to make, uh, comparing populations genetically. Um, and uh, it's, it's about the pan migrations of the last uh, couple of thousand years from Mongolia. And all these areas show uh, pan migrations at different times. Um, but the Genetics, and this is the Y chromosome and the mitochondrial DNA, can be put into genetic distance maps. They're not the same as geographic maps, but uh, uh, they can be used uh, to uh, compare populations. And uh, the, the line here is the Yangtze. Uh, so above the line are the northern Han populations, below the line in red uh, are the uh, southern Han populations. All these other dots here are minorities uh, in um, southern China, south of the Yangtze. And if we look at this, oops, if we look at this for mitochondrial DNA, uh, again we've got uh, the northern hand north of the Yangtze and uh, the uh, southern hand south of the Yangtze. But the difference here is that for the Y chromosome, there's no other overlap genetically between northern Han white chromosomes and some uh, some Han white chromosomes and some Chinese uh, minorities. Um, but on for the mitochondrial DNA, uh, there is extensive overlap, uh, particularly uh, with this, this big square here are the Hong Mi, which are the most widely distributed southern Chinese uh, minorities. Um, and the concept which is explained in this uh, is that the Mongolian invasions, the North Han, uh, were predominantly male. And the mitochondrial DNA, which represents the maternal heritage in southern China, south of the United City, is more or less preserved. And uh, so what one has is a mixture of male and from the North quite recently. But if we're looking at the mitochondrial DNA, we are actually looking at uh, the original uh, distribution before the Han migrations. And um, that means that uh, uh, the southern, southern Chinese uh, mitochondrial DNA may be much more representative of the past. Now the same, same group did another study uh, which included uh, um, some other populations. Now, Again, we've got, and this is a genetic distance map, we've got the Yangtze, being shown here as this line. Uh, the dark uh, blocks here are Mong uh, Mongolian, uh, Altaic populations. Uh, those are Northern Han, uh, north of the Yangtze, and that's Southern Han. And this is mitochondrial DNA. Um, what it shows is that there's tremendous overlap between the Southern Han, which we're in green here, uh, and uh, the other minorities. And uh, for the 
non-Han Sino-Tibetan speakers, it's uh, related languages. Uh, again, there's, there's quite, a, quite a degree of overlap. When we look at the Hmong-Ming, they cover the whole of the genetic area of southern China. So if one was to choose any particular group to represent the ancient populations of southern China, it would be the Hmong-Ming uh, minorities. And these are the other um, language groups. Uh, that's the Dai languages in southern China, which are similar to Thai and to Lao, and those of the uh, Austroasiatic uh, languages. Now, we've, uh, in our, in our uh, collaborative group in, uh, uh, in the UK, um, we've done a similar um, principle components analysis of genetic distance map, uh, but we've included all of the Southeast Asian, island Southeast Asian populations. And this is from 28 different populations in southern China and uh, maybe 10,000 people. So it's a, it's a huge comparison. And I'll go through this slowly, again, identifying different groups. This circle represents island Southeast Asia, so uh, the Philippines, um, the uh, uh, Borneo and um, Indonesia. This group here represents the Malay populations of the Malay Peninsula. They're completely different uh, from uh, Island Southeast Asia. Um, and if one is going to take a compass bearing, uh, this is the south and that group is the north. So, uh, the, the southern populations, although they share uh, the fact that they're in that part of the uh, plot, uh, they are very different. And they're extremely different from the Taiwanese. Uh, so uh, this doesn't support the idea that, that uh, Taiwanese uh, invaded uh, Southeast Asia uh, or even came into the uh, Malay Peninsula. Um, if we look at the southern Chinese shown here in, uh, in green, Sino Tibetan, uh, we find they're actually quite close to northern mainland Southeast Asia on this map. Uh, the, this, that, those two circles represent Austroasiatic and uh, Dayak languages. Uh, and again, the Hmong mean scattered itself between the two. So, what this shows is that that. Southern Chinese border isn't is just a political border. It doesn't differentiate uh, the populations very clearly, north from south. But uh, I arranged it that way so that we could actually look at the figures. Uh, so, um, what conclusions can we make? Firstly, concerning the deep ancestry of the peninsula Malay populations. Well, only 60% of Malay found in mitochondrial DNA lines are of local Sangha ancestry. They've always been here. They're also largely local mainland Southeast Asian origin. Uh, only a small minority of Malay anti DNA lines show any evidence of being derived either from island Southeast Asia or via Taiwan. Um, so, this is against the view that. Uh, that the old theory has that they're recent immigrants from island Southeast Asia. Um, though I, I, I should say that uh, there is evidence for 7% uh, uh, commonality with Taiwan, but that's, that's peanuts compared with the, uh, uh, the rest of the component. So this is the reverse of the out of Taiwan replacement view which has previously been more, more influential and was based on the distribution of Austronesian languages between Taiwan and Southeast Asia region. There are some other conclusions. Southeast Asia has the most numerous original founding MTDNA lineages outside Africa. It's the most diverse uh, part of uh, non-African world. Most East Asian mitochondrial DNA lines originate as ancestral founders by Southeast Asia. Uh, 60,000 years ago, with subsequent spread north to China. Then from around 25,000 years ago, multiple local founding uh, mitochondrial lines start to diversify and expand locally and reach both on the mainland, Southeast Asia, and South China. 
for around 15 pounds a year, multi derivative, that means descendant, mitochondrial DNA lines, originating in northern Maine and Southeast Asia and South China, start to expand locally and spread each year southwards down inside the shelf. These mitochondrial lines spread down the Malay Peninsula from northern Maine and Southeast Asia, continue throughout the Holocene in its last 10,000 years until the historic period, joining the ancestors of both RMS and Malays. And the Mekong River, river was probably a potential central highway for such spread in addition to the recent US some of those lines. Now, um, I must uh, take some time to describe uh, the collaborators, because this is, uh, this is, one, this is the one-man show. Um, and uh, so first of all, the, the field workers, that's myself and my wife, uh, we go out and collect samples. Uh, and uh, then uh, there's a very close collaborators here at uh, USM uh, in, in Penang, uh, Professor Mokta, who's sitting in the front row, and who's uh, um, been a long-term collaborator. In fact, my relationship with uh, USM archaeology goes back over 15 years or 10 years, something like that. It's, it's a long, long period. Um, Sean Eng, uh, who did all uh, the complete sequencing for the Malay populations, and that was part of his PhD thesis, which uh, uh, he awarded from uh, Leeds University recently uh, under our supervision, and uh, a, a brilliant uh, PhD thesis, you know, say. Um, as I say. As I noted, also. Uh, from uh, USM, uh, whose uh, team collected the Malay samples that uh, I'm actually talking about collaborators at uh, Sean Tikkun's. Um, from my former visit to uh, Malaysia um, to uh, work with the RMSC, uh, our two collaborators I've mentioned already, um, the late uh, Ali, Ali Taha, Ali Ka, Haji Taha, um, and uh, um, I mentioned the name before. How to write this one? Our team in the, in the north of England, uh, that's uh, Professor Martin Richards, who runs the lab where all the sequencing is done, and uh, Maria Pala, who did the principal components analysis on the last slide there. And uh, also our Portuguese collaborators, uh, this is uh, Pedro Suarez and Andrea Brandao. And uh, one of our supporters, then the Lasso, the Lasso Foundation. And with that, my uh, talk is over. Thank you very much.